Greetings, and welcome to Parsing John. Today we're going to take a look at verse 10, which we did not have quite enough time in the previous Greek video because, well, I rambled a lot and said a bunch of dumb stuff. So, today, let's get straight into it. We've got our rubric here. Put it in the center for a moment for reference. You should probably make sure that you all have something like that available to yourselves. Um, also had... I remember the last video. A card like this, which lists, lists all the form of pas... Tis and the word, words for one. This is another type of thing that would be very useful to have on hand. We've got one of those there. <laughs> Not that I use it. All right. So, en toi cosmoi en kaiho cosmos diautu egeneto kaiho cosmos auton uk egno. Okay. So, very first thing in this line we have here is a prepositional phrase. En toi cosmoi en is a verb. So we're going to close the prepositional phrase there. And we've already parsed earlier, and it looks like we've got one right there and right there, so we don't need to do it again. The, the only issue there would be figuring out what is the subject of ain. We know it means was. And for that, we would want to look at our previous singular subject. Well, it's going to be the subject of whatever arkomenon is, or where did it go? Ho is, singular during that verb, and that's going to be the light. So it was, or since we know the light is a gun, um, it, it is from the word of God, so we could say he was. Now, back to our prepositional phrase, we've got en toi cosmoi. We know that these are going to be dative singular. So in here is taking the dative, and it is showing a location. This is singular. And cosmos, we already know, is masculine. All right. In the world. Since this is n plus the dative, it's not showing a transfer from one location into another location. We just have stationary location. So the light, he, the word, is, as of the time of this verb, stationary in the world, not transferring from the world to another location or from another location into the world. All right? Let's say he. He was in the world comma, and, nothing to parse there, ho cosmos, don't have a verb yet, so we're not going to do that, but we can mark off this prepositional phrase. Ah, we've got again a toe again. We've already parsed again a toe up here. However, since we've got a different subject for again a toe here, we've got ho cosmos, which we'll get to in a moment, born, our use in verse 6, is probably not going to work very well. Instead, we might need to go back and use the more common translation of this verb, which we had in our previous section, verses 1 through 5. So, again, a kato can mean born, become, or happened. So we're going to put in here became, because that's the more common of the options. But we're also going to pencil under it was born. That's what you always want to do until you are sure what your subject is. I already know what the subject is, so my initial indication uh, inclination is to leave this out. But since we haven't parsed the subject, I'm going to leave that there. Okay, coming back. Prepositional phrase, obviously not the subject. Whole cosmos. Here we go. We've got our os ending. We already know cosmos is masculine, so whole goes with it. That's clearly nominative and singular. It's not acting as a predicate. It is instead acting as a subject. All right, so, and the world. And the world was born. Nope, doesn't make sense. This is not Greek mythology. Eh, wrong. Knowing our subject means we can cut and cross that off and go to, back to the more common of the translations, became. And the world became. Became what? Why this prepositional phrase that we saw earlier, I think, in yeah, probably verse 3. We've got elision happening here. I'm going to spell that for you. Where a vowel drops out because the next word starts with a vowel, and this is usually going to be alpha, epsilon, or the diphthong omicron iota. Here we have dia is the most likely candidate. This one is going to take the genitive case because we've got oo here. That's going to be genitive and singular. What is the gender of this word? Why well, we have to look back to something else. 
and that's going to be the subject of ain here. What was the subject of ain? Why, that's tofos. Going back through ekomenon, ho, and then tofos. Through, and we know fos, because of how we translate it here, he. So we're going to say, rather than through it, we're going to say through him. Connecting from here all the way back to verse 2. All right. So, and the world through him became, comma, and whole cosmos. No need to parse that again. You can just bring it over here. The world. Okay. Egno. Egno here is a verb, and it looks, frankly, kind of weird. So, we've got an omega here, and this one, I believe, it looks this way because we've got um, some, what is it? I, I forget the, the specific term for when this happens, because this is a more natural occurrence than an elision or something like crassus, uh, which is more out of laziness of the speaker. So this is where the stem of the verb has a vowel, and so the personal ending of the verb happens, and then the, the stem vowel and the ending, they combine into something else. That might be what's going on here. But suffice it to say, this is a third person, and it is singular. That's going to be aorist. We've got our stem egn, which is the aorist stem of this verb. Nosco. I can't remember the future. Egnon. It's going to be the aorist form of the first person singular, and it's active. And it is indicative. No special subjunctive clauses going on here. And it means gnu. Or in this case, not, because it's got an ook here. We'd say did not know. Because of aorist. Okay, did not know what? Well, we need an accusative direct object here. We've got it right there. Accusative and singular. And then we need to figure out the gender of this by going back to its antecedent. And that's going to be autu, but that doesn't work, so we have to go back even further to what autu is referring to. Ain, still not a noun. Akomanon, still not a noun. Ho, still not a noun. Ah, fos, there we go. And since we've translated autu here and ain here as a masculine subject rather than the neuter noun that we have here, Again, based on the context from the first three verses of this chapter, first three, first five verses, we're going to say him again. All right, so we've got all of our words here in this verse, and we can go ahead and take a look at what our full translation is. Okay, he was in the world, and the world through him became, and the world did not know him. All right, so... Reading that aloud in English, it makes a lot of sense. So that's our first test against whether or not a sentence is, has been translated correctly. So passes, which is good. This ends this page. Uh, in our next video, we're going to take a look at verse 10 in the Vulgate. And then after that, we're going to have to pull in a completely new piece of paper to take a look at verses 11 and 12, which, as I said, are almost as long as these five verses themselves. So... 11 is probably going to get its own video, and then 12 its own video. And then after we finish that, we're going to take a look at the, the Vulgate next to the Greek, and that one's going to be a really long video in all likelihood. See how they do next to each other. I hope this has been useful for you, and have a good day.